بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين. Today I'm going to talk about nasal consonants. Here you can say that there are three phonemes in English which are represented by nasal consonants. So nasal consonants are three in number. These are as follows: nasal consonants. These are m, mm, n, and in. So we have m, n, and in. The first two, that is m and n, the first two are found in all languages of the world. These two, m and m and n, are found in all languages of the world. But the last one is found in few, very few languages. Now, for the production of these, of course, be, before we start talking about these, we have to say that the main difference, the main distinction between nasal consonants and other consonants is that in nasal consonants, the sort bit is lowered, but it is, it is raised in all other consonants. Again, the sort bit is lowered in the production of nasal consonants, but it is raised in the production of all the other consonants in English, of course. Now, I'm going to talk about the first two, M and N, M and N. Now, as usual, we have three things to talk about here. We have the diagram, the points related to the production of the phoneme or the sound, and also we have the description. Now, I'll start talking about the first two, as I have just said, M and N. For the production of these two consonants, these two phonemes, the speech organs are shown in the following diagrams, two diagrams here. The first one is this. Now, as usual, we start drawing the upper jaw. This is the upper jaw. And this is one diagram. And then what is, is this? So this is the upper jaw. Now, the first point says, for both M and N, the soft pellet is lowered. For both M and N, the soft pellet is lowered. Now, we do this, we draw, this is the vertical line, which represents the wall of the pharynx. Now, as you see here, the soft pellet is, now, is not in contact with this wall of the pharynx, so it is lowered. You can say that it is lowered, as you see, so that the breath goes through the nasal cavity. The same goes for this course. This is for M. This is the diagram for M, and this is the diagram for N. So as you see here, for both M and N, the soft is lowered, you see, so that the breath goes through the nasal cavity, as you see here. Now, the next point, the second point is this, for M, the mouth, of course, is blocked. The oral cavity is blocked in both, of course. So we say that the, for M, the mouth is blocked by closing the tulips. While it is, uh, while here, the mouth is blocked, the oral cavity is blocked by what? By pressing the tip of the tongue against the rear ridge, and the sides of the tongue are in contact with the sides of the pellet. Now, we draw it this way. So here, you can see here, these are the tulips. Now, as you see here, the oral cavity must, must be blocked. And you see here that the mouth or the oral cavity is blocked by what? By closing the tulips. So the lips here are, are in contact with each other. For in, this is for in, for in, the mouth is blocked by what? You see here, by pressing the tip of the tongue against the alveolar ridge. You see this? You see? The mouth is blocked, the oral cavity is blocked by what? by pressing the tip of the tongue against the rear ridge, and also the sides of the tongue are in contact. This can't be shown in the diagram, of course, because this is a profile. This, the sides of the tongue are in contact with the sides of the pellet. Now, the last point regarding the two, the production of the two phonemes, the two sounds here, the, the two sounds are voiced in English. The two sounds are voiced in English as they are in all the other languages, or other languages, also that it is, they are both voiced, and the voiced air 
passes through the nasal cavity and then through the nose. The voice air passes through the nasal cavity and then the last point is the nose, the nostrils. Now, let's move to the description of these two phonemes, these two sounds. Here we can say that M, let's start with M, this is M. Of course, from the point of view of place of articulation, it is what? Bilabial. Because we use the two lips, so we say that it is bilabial. From the point of view of what? Of nano articulation, it is nasal. Nasal. And of course, it is all nasals are voiced in English and in all other languages, so it is voiced. And of course, it will be weak, short. Alines. Regarding N here, N is what, from the point of view of place variation, it is what, since the tip of the tongue is in contact with the upper ridge, we say that it is alveolar. Alveolar. And of course, it is also nasal, also voiced. And of course, here, since it's voiced, also weak, short. Alines. Now, let's go to your textbook to read the words for you. Now, page 50, please. Him, lamb. Limp, lamp. One, tin. Send, sent. Room, game. Lamp, games. Soon, mine. Font, and sons. Next group, please. Lambs, lamp. Send, sent. Joint, joint. Hums, hum. Sins, sins. Complained and complaint. Now let's talk about syllabic consonants. Before we talk about this subject, we have to know the components of this subject. These are, here, we have syllabic and consonants. Now, what do you mean by consonants? You can say here, unlike vowels, consonants are those sounds which are produced with either complete closure or partial closure. For example, when we say, P, B, here, the mouth is completely blocked by, uh, is blocked by closing the tulips. So this is called complete closure. This is called complete closure, aglap tam. That is, there is obstruction. And, for example, we have f, v, we have partial closure, and there is a narrowing, and the breath goes through this narrowing. So these are consonants. Now, what do you mean by syllables? Syllabic, syllabic or now here we can say that what is meant by, the question is this, what is meant by syllables in English? What is meant by syllables in English? Now here we can say, roughly speaking, generally speaking, we can say that syllables in English are of four main types. These are represented by the following examples. Here I'll give you an example or examples, in fact, to show what is meant by syllables. Now, here you can say, for example, the first one, a, uh, second one, Of course, when we talk about syllables, we talk about the phonemic transcription, the phonemic trans not spelling. So we depend on this phonemic transcription, which is put here between two slanted lines or slant to slant lies, lines or slashes. So we talk about this, not the spelling. So please, you have to pay attention to this. Not spelling. Now, here 
As you see here, now the first type consists of only a vowel. The second one consists of a consonant plus a vowel. The third one is a vowel plus consonant. The fourth one, consonant, vowel, consonant. Now these are, generally speaking, we can say that these are the main types of syllables. Now, what's important here is that you see that vowels are found in all these four types. So this means that the main, the major component, the most important component is the vowel. So you can say that if there is a vowel, there is a syllable. If there is no vowel, there is no syllable. If there is a vowel again, there is a syllable. If there is no vowel, there is no syllable. So the production of vowels, the production of syllables depends on the on the vowel. Now you see here, now if we talk about this, the last one, fourth one, this is called on set. Now any any consonant at the beginning of uh, syllables is called onset. Now here the vowel is called nucleus. And now what? Nucleus. Nucleus or peak. Peak or nucleus. Now the, the last this this one is what is code or termination. Code or termination. Now, the number of consonants doesn't affect the number of syllables. Now, what do you mean by this? For example, if I say, for example, instead of C, we say street. You see here, what do we have here? We have three consonants at the beginning. St, er. So English syllables, English uh, uh, syllables may permit three consonants to come initially. We may have three consonants initially in English. We don't have four consonants, of course. So the sound system of English in the vowel sound in English yes, aswar fil bidai. So we can say again, the sound system of English permits three consonants to come initially, and of course it permits. Four to five consonants finally. يسمح بخمسة أربعة وخمسة consonants في النهاية. Now you see here, s t r. Of course, we depend on the phonemic transcription, as I have just said. These are three. Now, how many syllables does this word consist of? It consists of only one syllable, and this one, of course, consists of also one syllable. And you see here, consonant, vowel, consonant. Here we have consonant, 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 vowel, consonant. We can say that we can represent this by the following way here. In the following way. C, 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 V, C. You see here, C consonant, C consonant, C consonant, V vowel, and C consonant. Now, so we say that this, this word consists of only one syllable. What I mean is this, syllables are not affected by the number of consonants. They are affected by, by the number of vowels. You see here, this consists of only one syllable. There's only a vowel. And this one is also consists of one syllable. But what we have here, what we do have here, we have only a vowel. So there is, we can say that there is zero onset. There is no onset. So we say that there is zero onset because there is no onset it's a zero onset and here also we have what we have only nucleus and there is also zero code or zero termination now what do we have here we have onset plus nucleus but we have zero code zero termination what, what do you have here in the syllable we have vowel vowel which is a nucleus and Code. There is no onset, so we say that there is zero onset. Zero onset. Now, in this syllable, we have what? Onset, nucleus, code, or termination. And of course, here you see that we have consonant, 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 
and nucle nucleus or peak and call it. So again, the number of the syllables is not affected by the number of consonants. It is affected by the number of vowels. Now, now, now let's take these examples to know what is meant by this. Hi is this hi. I, now you see here, this is the phonemic transcription of hi and higher. Now, how many syllables does each of these two words consist of? Now, the first one consists of what? Of one syllable. Of one syllable. And instead of the fact that we have two vowels here, we have two vowels, but the word, this word consists of one syllable. Why? Because the vowels come together, come one after the other, without being interrupted by a consonant. May يقطعهم consonant هنا. They are considered, or this word is considered, or it consists of one syllable. The second one is also consists of one syllable. And instead of the fact, yes, instead of the fact, in spite of the fact that we have three vowels, we have a, 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 aya, aya. In spite of this fact, we have three vowels coming together, but still, we this word consists of one syllable. So. If the vowels come together, they are considered one unit, let's say, in the, part, in the number of, when we talk about the number of syllables. So this is what is meant by syllable. Now, let's go to syllabic consonants. What do you mean by syllabic consonants? Now, I'm going to show you this. Here, I'm going to give you examples to show this. Now, for example, The word here, the word button, but this word is is pronounced or it has, let's say, it has two pronunciations in English. This word has two pronunciations in English. The first one is this, button, and the second one is but, and also this word. Bottle has two pronunciations in English, bottle and bottle. Now, what do you mean by this? Of course, before we go further here, you can say that the majority of native speakers of English, معظم الإنجليز, pronounce this word as but, but, but. The majority of uh, uh, native speakers of English pronounce this word as but. But some native speakers also pronounce this as button. Also, regarding this word, also most native speakers of English pronounce this as bottle. Bottle. But some of them, yes, the minority, of course, minority, pronounce this as bottle. Bottle. Now, what do we have here? Now, if you let, look at these, uh, these two words, we have here... Ba, ba, tin. What I mean is this. Each of these two words has two syllables. The first one is this, and this word, ba, tin. We have a vowel, so there is a syllable, and also we have here a vowel, so there is a syllable here. This syllable consists of what? Ba, which consists of onset plus nucleus. The second syllable consists of what? Consonant, nucleus, vowel, which is a vowel, and cod, one consonant. Now, regarding the second word, we have two syllables also, maqta'i, ba, and til. The first one consists of what? A consonant, which is considered onset, and we have a vowel, which is considered a nucleus. The second one it consists of what? Consonant, vowel, consonant. So we have onset, Nucleus and cod. Now, what do you mean by this? As you see here, in the second syllable, in the second syllable, we have what? We have. Uh, there is, in fact, there is a vowel at the center of this syllable. Why at the center? Because we have here we have consonant 
and consonant and the vowel is what is at the center في مركز المقطع الآن vowel as you see here at the center of the syllable also regarding the second word also we have here the second syllable مقطع الثاني what do we have in the second syllable we have consonant consonant and at the center there is a vowel usually the vowel is the schwa this is called schwa now here we can say that sometimes sometimes not always of course sometimes in or l in or l l occupies the place tahtal occupies the place tahtal makan at the center of the syllable tahtal hadha al makan where is it it is at the center of the syllable which is usually occupied by a vowel of course there is a vowel here muhtal al markaz al maqta al vowel so sometimes you can say sometimes not always sometimes we in or l occupies the place at the center of the syllable which usually is occupied by a vowel and in this case they are called syllabic consonants now if i say button <coughs> button in here is not syllabic why because it didn't occupy the, the the vowel there is a vowel here i pronounce the vowel i said but tin 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 uh, tin but here if we say but 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 here the consonant here which uh, uh, occupied the place of this vowel so this word is a pronounce here but again look up at these two pronunciations for these two words button 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 again button button and about regarding this word bottle 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 now you see here these are considered what syllabic consonants syllabic consonants of course these are shown by what by this vertical line this small vertical line this means that the two these consonants which are uh, usually n or l are called syllabic consonants of course in english we may also have these other consonants m r and n we may have these consonants uh, used as syllabic consonants but not always and they are not preferred in fact in, by the majority of uh, native speakers of English they are so this is not preferred this is not preferred and uh, again as I have just said for example take this word please contain now you see here you see that the pronunciation of this word as you see Look here, contain. Now we have two syllables. Usually, the, uh, of course, this is represented uh, 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 here. We may sometimes put here, put this dot, which means that this word consists of two vowels, two consonant syllables. Sorry, two syllables, can and tain, can and tain. Now this syllable, which also has in, for example is not is never pronounced as syllabic in here is never pronounced as, as syllabic so this is why i uh, uh, have just said that n or l sometimes are said to be syllabic consonants so they are not always syllabic but sometimes